Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. Today I want to show you how to make a really simple little quilting board. Now these are great if you like to work on the go or if you are putting together small pieces of fabric and you don't want to have to keep getting up and down from your ironing board to your sewing machine. So on one side you have a lovely padded section, just perfect for ironing, and on the other side you have a cutting mat. So you can place it down, cut out all your little pieces, flip it over and press anything that needs pressing. It's perfect to just have by your side when you're at your sewing machine. They really are simple to make, really easy, and I'm going to show you exactly how right now. So here's what you're going to need for this project. You're going to want some gaffer tape, potentially a staple gun, a rotary cutter if you've got one, otherwise fabric scissors will do, a hot glue gun, plenty of glue sticks, but most importantly a nice little cutting mat. This one is an A3 mat, it's double sided, it doesn't matter what side you want to use, but I'm going to have my pink side showing. You also want some nice thick cardboard. If you don't have particularly thick cardboard, you can do what I've done here, and I've actually got three pieces that I'm going to layer up together. Alternatively, what's really good is a piece of plywood, but I don't have anyone who can cut that for me to hand, so we're going with the card. You also want some wadding. The best type of wadding to use is actually that really cheap and cheerful polyester wadding that no one likes to use for quilting. If you've got any of that lying around, it's much better than this thin cotton stuff. What I'm going to do to make mine slightly more padded is I'm actually going to use some toy stuffing. So I'll show you how to create it this way. The last thing you're going to want is a piece of fabric that you want to cover your board with. And I would suggest using a good quality 100% cotton quilting cotton so that it's really nice and strong. What you also want is a little bit of lightweight iron-on interfacing. So we're going to start by cutting all of the pieces that we need and they will all be based upon your quilting mat or your cutting mat. What you want to do first of all is to cut your card or plywood so that it is approximately half an inch smaller all the way round than your cutting mat. If you're using cardboard like myself you might want to cut two or three pieces and stick them together which is what I'm going to do next. Just going to layer them up and I'm going to take a little piece of my electrical tape or gaffer tape, duct tape I think you call it in the States, and simply tape my cardboard pieces together on both edges just to hold them in place. And wrap that around the ends and you can see I've just put two pieces but it's just holding them all nicely together. Once you've done that, you're going to want to cut your wadding. Now, you want your wadding piece to be approximately one and a half inches larger than your cardboard all the way around. I've just rough cut mine, but you can see it's just about one and a half inches larger. Now, for your fabric, you want to be cutting it three inches larger than your cutting mat all the way around. So here's mine, my mat, and my fabric is three inches larger all the way around. Now I'm going to take this and put some interfacing onto it just to stiffen it up and strengthen it just a little bit. So once you've attached your interfacing to your fabric, you can just pop that to one side. You can also pop your mat to one side, and we're going to get started with our cardboard or our plywood and our wadding. Now, if you've gone for a polyester wadding, you can simply place your cardboard in the center and you're gonna bring the edges of your wadding up and secure it with some of the duct tape. It's nice and thick and it should be spongy enough. 
You could alternatively use a couple of layers of foam as well, um, although that is quite expensive and you do need to make sure that it is not going to get damaged by the heat of the iron. So if you do use foam, make sure that you use a proper, like a bosal foam or something like that. A little bit expensive, I would say, for this particular project. But we're gonna go with some thin poly cotton wadding. So just to give it a little bit of extra bounce, I'm gonna use some toy stuffing. So I'm gonna take my cardboard, work out roughly where it's gonna go in the center of my wadding, and then just lay down some toy stuffing so that it will end up going underneath it. So I'm just gonna spread that out in the general vicinity of where my cardboard will go. I've got a fairly thick layer there, not too much. There we go. And once you've laid that down, you're then gonna pop your cardboard on top. So as you can see there, it's quite spongy. I'm then gonna prepare a couple of pieces of duct tape just pop them on the side of my table here so that I can just grab them. I'm going to do four to get me started. Just small pieces and I'm going to start by pushing down in the centre of my cardboard and pulling over one side as far as I can and popping that duct tape onto the fabric and the cardboard. Then I'm going to push down and along and again pull my other side round so that it's really nice and snug and pop another piece of tape on. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the two long lengths. Now what you might want to do is take your fabric scissors and just remove a little bit of the bulk from the corners before you do this. And just cut out the corner. If you refer to the blog post that's linked in the description, you'll be able to see a photograph of the sections that I have removed before wrapping the sides. So once you've removed those corners, again, you can push down, tuck any toy stuffing in that's escaping, push down, pull over nice and tightly. You're going to want to use a couple of pieces of tape on these longer lengths. And then you're going to do the opposite side. And that's going to be the final one that you pull in to make it really nice and snug. So again, give it a really good tug. Push down nice and hard and pull over those edges. And we are not aiming for something neat at this stage. We're just aiming for something that is nice and rounded and curved and spongy on our pressing side, but as you can see, is far from attractive on the back. What you might want to do at this stage is just go round, grab a few more pieces of tape and just tidy up the edges just a little bit. As I say, it doesn't have to be attractive. It's not a thing of beauty. Um, but you don't also want to have lots of loose edges hanging out of the side of your package. You can use a glue gun to do this part if you want to. I just find that the duct tape is really strong and therefore serves the purpose much better than faffing around with glue at this stage. I'm just going to trim off that little piece that was overhanging there. Tidy up my corners just a little bit. But that is what my board looks like now. It's slightly rounded on this side because of the toy stuffing that I popped in. It's nice and smooth and soft and my wadding is all secured on the back. So happy with that. Now the next thing you want to do is to take your fabric, place it face down on the table, take your board and place it wadding side down on the wrong side of your fabric. 
position it in the center so that you've got your three inches running around either side. And then quite simply, you're gonna wrap it up like a present. Now this is the part where you get to play with your staple gun. If you don't have a staple gun, then you could use a hot glue gun or you could use more gaffer tape. It's entirely up to you. You are quite simply going to wrap this up now like a present. So start with one side and pop a staple into the center and then work your way along that side. Again, if you refer to the blog post, you'll see some detailed photos and step-by-step -step instructions. Once you've done one side, you're going to do the opposite side. Again, when you do this, you want to pull on the fabric and kind of push on the cardboard in opposite directions. So I'm pulling the fabric out to the right and I'm pushing my board to the left. And that's going to allow me to really bring that fabric round really snugly and tightly. You want a really snug finish. That's why using the staple gun is quite handy. Once you've wrapped up your two sides, you're going to wrap up your two long edges. And for that, I would simply fold the corner in just as if you were wrapping a Christmas present. I do my two corners first, and then I'll staple into the center. and then repeat on the other side. This fabric, by the way, is, I think it's almost vintage. It's Alexander Henry, and if it isn't vintage, it's replica vintage, um, and it's called Smitten Kitten, and it's been in my stash for ages. Once you've staple gunned, what I like to do is just run some duct tape all the way around those edges, just in case those staples should pull out and to keep it all extra snug. And there you have it. All that's left is to take some hot glue, run it all the way along the edges of your mat and stick it in place. And there you have it, your ironing side and your cutting side. I hope you've enjoyed this Beautiful Things tutorial. Please do give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you again really soon.